today's video is going to be about what to know about anxiety. I know that probably you have a lot of things on the quarantine, but sometimes you don't know what is the difference between anxiety as a disorder and anxiety as a, a normal emotion, okay? So I am going to uh, guide you through the video. Remember that you also need to read the article. It's not the same information, guys. You need to check the article because at the end of the article, there is a PDF that I am going to be uploading on the web page, well, on the Schoology group. You have uh, an activity, well, several activities. I, I believe that it's between three or four. And you're going to be doing and answering sometimes some questions that, of course, is not going to be only on the video. So you're going to watch the video, yes, but first of all, you need to read the article, okay? And I am going to give you some tips. Of course, it's about the information that you have on the article that you have read before. But it's, first of all, anxiety is normal. It's a normal and healthy emotion, okay? When anxiety, um, it's a healthy emotion and when it starts to become a medical disorder, okay? So there's a huge difference. And remember that anxiety sometimes can bring problems like excessive nervousness. I don't know if you have ever felt like very, very nervous and then start beating your nails or probably a little bit sweating, things like that. Another symptoms that you can have when you are anxious and they don't belong to a, a normal emotion. They are more a little bit like a, a medical disorder. Also fear, but it, it could be fear that it doesn't have any background, you know? You can say like, I'm very afraid of the dark. I'm really, really afraid of the dark. And it's not a, a logical fear, okay? So that's the thing. So it could be fear, like when you don't feel comfortable about, around people, also that. I don't know if you have ever been into a party and you are like not, not really comfortable and you start feeling anxious. Okay, so that is also uh, a common type of anxiety, okay? Social anxiety. And then apprehension. When it's very hard for you to leave a relation, it could be romantic or a friendship, but this is also a very common anxiety that teenagers can have. For example, when you have a boyfriend and then sooner or later the relationship ends and when that happens you start feeling not only like a deep sadness, you also feel like these sweatings or you need to go to the school where you were before when you were his girlfriend or her boyfriend. So the thing is that you need to see all the time this person that caused you probably some sadness and this caused you anxiety, okay? So this anxiety, probably it could be a medical disorder when you start feeling like really, really, really bad physically, not only emotionally. And also worry that it's when you overthink uh, over and over the future, okay? So you start thinking about what is going to happen if I don't deliver my English homework on time and that just starts to be a, a huge problem for you. It's not only like, uh, it gives you not only anxiety as you think it is, it gives you like actually a medical disorder, okay? And then, but not only that, anxiety is not only mental, guys. Remember, as I told you before, uh, anxiety could be also not a mental issue, not emotional, it could be also physical things, okay? You can have like physical symptoms. Okay, so have you ever felt, for example, so anxious that you start having symptoms like losing your breath, when it's one of it, pain on your chest, horrible headaches, um, even some causes faint. Sometimes you feel like very, very nauseous when you start feeling anxiety. Well, or even blood pressure, that it's also another medical symptom that you can have because of anxiety. Then, why I think it's important to talk about anxiety with you guys? You know that we're on a quarantine, right? So, the first thing that I am going to tell you that you can find in the article is, first, because some numbers, as we read, affect more than 40 million citizens only in the United States, okay? So imagine, if that's in one of the countries around the world, I don't know what it's going on in Mexico and specifically with teenagers, okay? Then, and the worst is that only 36.9% is treated. So even when you have a severe medical disorder with anxiety, 
sometimes you don't go to a professional or you don't get professional help okay sometimes you find a lot of videos on YouTube that tells you like how to deal with anxiety and you think that that's enough but you need to know that if you have an anxiety disorder uh, you need to go uh, to take like a, a then what's the difference between anxiety as an emotion and anxiety as a disorder that is the thing that we're going to see now uh, first of all uh, have you ever had good or bad news and you felt heart racing or sweating good or bad news guys even if they told you like we're going to Disneyland or we're going to have the best trip of our lives or you have a 10 on maths or something like that okay so I can say I don't know that excitement or that it's even even if it's very very happy that's anxiety okay and uh, for example heart racing when you like a lot someone else or when you hug your boyfriend or your girlfriend you feel that okay this is also a type of anxiety but it's anxiety as an emotion and uncontrollable feelings of worry increased irritability specifically on this we can see mad all the time or even aggressive like someone even your best friend like hi how are you and you're like i'm fine why are you asking what do you care okay all of this aggressiveness sometimes it could be also a response from anxiety okay what else um of course if you focus only on the things that worries you uh you soon will have a lack of concentration for the rest of everything okay but uh, as I told you before, restlessness, that you are not able to have a good time. Also, sleep difficulties, okay? When you start having difficulties falling or staying asleep. Probably when you uh, are sleeping, it's very easy for you to, I don't know, take a long nap, like four hours nap in the afternoon, fine. But probably you take a long time in the process of falling asleep. Okay, so that's also another kind of symptom, okay? And this is something else. What does GAD stands for, okay? The first thing is, it's Generalized Anxiety Disorder. And it's one of the anxiety disorders. We have plenty of them, okay? This first one is a non-specific, and this means that it can involve any kind of life event. And this one is specifically very difficult to identify as i told you before you need professional help in case that you feel a symptom or you are not uh, what it's a this uh, first of all well to continue with the sequence uh the thing is that what happens if you think that you have a disorder first you need to check all the symptoms okay and something that that, that it's very important is that you are unable to stay calm okay that if you say okay i am going to make a breathing exercise or i am going to watch this video to distract myself sometimes it's not that easy okay and you can do a lot of things and they are not going to work okay and you get frustrated because you continue feeling the same so this is this is when it's, it became a disorder not only a, a normal emotion okay then uh, panic disorder which is sudden attacks of intense terror i mean that you feel feel like super afraid of something okay and all, also apprehension okay or apprehension remember that apprehension leads to a lot of another symptoms that it could be shaking that you uh, start trembling okay and another thing it could be confusion that you don't understand quite well what is going on around you then diseasedness that you start like feeling very very bad probably nausea and you cannot stay um, standing you need to sit or something like that uh, no shock as I told you before and breathing difficulties that even if someone that is with you like only breathe only breathe and they are like that and you're not able to breathe okay you feel like like they are squeezing your lungs okay and you are unable to breathe uh, and this all of these symptoms it can last it could last uh, between 10 minutes or even hours so try to imagine or try to figure it out in case that you have lived uh, this that you in case that you have experienced something like this imagine having all of these symptoms for hours it could be like very very tiring because you cannot do anything I mean if you have a lot of activities to do with to deal with 
uh, it's very difficult for you to do them because of all of the symptoms okay so and this one that it's a panic disorder it can happen without a trigger so you can be like in class or something and you start feeling like you cannot breathe like everything around you it's moving and all of it it's a panic disorder and you don't know actually the real fear in all of this okay this is another type of of anxiety as I told you before and the other one that you have on the article is a specific phobia as I told you before it could be an irrational fear some, for some people and it could be an object or a situation or even for example as I told you before animals you can say I have a arachnophobia I have a, I don't know uh, for example my grandma uh, she has like this phobia to the birds because she has like a trauma that when she was little, uh, her grandma, her grandma, sorry, her mom, used to send her to feed the chickens. And she was very little, she was like three years old or four years old. So imagine for a three or four years old, uh, uh, for a three or four year old, uh, she was very little and the chickens probably, the hens were not bigger than her, but they looked like huge animals, not, not like very very small for her and then uh, she developed a phobia to these birds I think there's a specific word over there I have no idea but uh, she cannot be for example she went to Amsterdam and she wasn't able to be uh, on the big place uh, with a lot of pigeons because she was so afraid and she was so scared and it was impossible for her to stay on a place with a lot of birds around her so all the time she had a lot of even headaches and she wasn't able to actually enjoy the place that she was visiting uh, we need to know that in a lot of cathedrals uh, they are full of pigeons so it was very difficult for her to to actually enjoy her trip to Europe and another situation not only things not only animals also if you are very afraid of darkness if you are very afraid of crowds if you go to a concert and you see a lot of people and suddenly you start like getting very very nervous and anxious this is also a specific phobia okay and the person that has it might be aware of the illogical fear so probably for example my my grandma as i told you before she knows that it's illogical and she's like i know it's stupid to be afraid so much of birds but uh, i cannot help it okay it's something that uh she cannot uh stop it okay and i mean at, at the end it remained unable to control the feelings of the anxiety as I told you before she's not in control even if she thinks it's a stupid phobia or it's dumb doesn't matter she cannot control it okay guys so you're going to be able to read the article then do the activities that you have below and you're going to send me all of this through Schoology so the only thing I'm asking you guys is please before you check the video, check your article. It's a little bit long, I know, but we have a lot of days to do it, okay? So that could be it for me today, guys. And I hope to see you on the next video and I hope you have a great week, okay? Bye-bye.